I think when Jim writes a script, he writes it without the boundaries of what is possible. He writes it to tell the best narrative story. And then when you pick up and read Titanic, Avatar, or The Way of Water, you go, how are we possibly going to do this? The challenge at first is so daunting that you don't know. But that's what excites me about the process. And that's what excites the crew that we were able to pull together. One of the things that was most rewarding to me coming out of the first Avatar was no matter where I was in the world, people identified themselves with the Navi. Whether I was in the Middle East, whether I was in South America, people would come up and say, the Navi, they are me. I see myself in that. And I believe in the sequels, people will see the same thing. On Pandora in the first movie, we introduced audiences to a number of different creatures. Uh, as we move into the sequels, we're doing the same thing. There's one creature in particular called the Tulkun that is more than just a creature. It's actually an intellectual species. And the reason I say that is because it too can connect with Ewa and download its memories. And it shares its experiences with the Navi. The Tulkun are 300 foot long behemoths, peaceful behemoths of the oceans. They have a, a language that they speak that is unique. They have mathematics, they have music, they have song, all of these things. They have philosophy within their, their culture. And they have a very strong bond with the reef people. And the Metkayina each have a sister or brother that is their bond with the Tulkun. And that happens very early in, in life. And Renal, played by Kate Winslet, she has a Tulkun that she's bonded with. And it's a lifelong bond, and it's, it's a kindred spirit that they share with each other. And they celebrate each other's families, the birth of a new child. They mourn the loss of a family member. Um, and we see that in the sequels. When that character was created, the idea of Sigourney playing the younger version was the perfect fit. And performance capture, I have always said, gives actors the opportunity to play characters that they could not otherwise play. And Kiri's character and Sigourney's performance are the perfect example of that. When you see Kiri up on the screen, she is a 14-year-old young Navi girl in search of herself. And it's the performance given by one of the great actresses of our time. But she's playing that girl. And Sigourney went back and studied what she was like when she was younger. We looked at footage that Sigourney gave us in helping to design Kiri and still images. Because for us, in a, in a character that we create, it only works to have the performance come through if you're holding on to some of the facial aspects of the actor itself. And Kiri did this. And, and, and Sigourney embraced this idea. And to see her playing a 14-year-old kid when she was performing it, it was magic. It's what acting is all about. What I am hoping audiences will experience when they finally get to see Way of Water in the theaters is something that makes them forget everything else that is going on in the world. That they are transported to another world, a world that they want to spend time in, but a world that they want to spend time with the characters in this story and learn from their journey how they in their own lives can overcome the challenges they face by the examples that our characters give them.